Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL to the fourth developer preview of Android 11 or Android R. And I actually got the OTA for this one specifically, but I saw that you had to download 1.3 gigs anyways. So I thought I might as well download the factory image and we'll do it just like we did last time uh, using the latest version of Magisk Canary. Uh, this requires you to have the Canary builds of Magisk Manager and I'll show you where you can grab that later on, but um, that's what you'll need. And you'll probably already have this if you're rooted from the third developer preview. So why don't we get started with a few downloads that we need to grab here. And the first thing is the latest version of the SDK platform tools. Now, please take note that it was recently updated uh, last month. Now it's on version 30. Uh, so make sure you download the latest one. It never hurts to be on the latest version here, especially when we're dealing with the developer previews. So click on the download link here for your operating system, agree with the terms and conditions and click on the blue download button. I'm just going to save everything we will download here today into one folder just to make it easy for us to do everything in. Uh, so you'll be able to follow step by step in this case. And the next thing we want to download is the factory image for our uh, Android developer preview. So not these flash tool links, we're going to download the factory image here for our Pixel 3. Click on that and agree with the terms and conditions again and download the factory image and also save that to the same download folder. And last but not least, we just need the Canary version of Magisk Manager. And uh, you can grab that off the GitHub page here if you don't have it already. And here we go. Say you're updating from Android 10 instead of the previous developer preview, you can still do that. So download the latest version of the Canary build and install the APK on your phone. And it should look like what you just saw uh, just a second ago. Now with everything downloaded, we need to extract and set up a few things. So why don't we open up the platform tools zip file right now. And I'm just using 7-zip here and extract the entire platform tools folder outside just like that. Now if you already have an existing installation of this, uh, say you've added it to your path environment variable, I recommend that you just replace your existing uh, location of the platform tools with the new ones. And that way you don't have to do anything special. You can just use ADB and Fastboot as you would normally. Uh, but in this case, uh, we'll be using it inside the platform tools. So once we've extracted that, let's open up the factory image here. Uh, open this folder inside the factory image. And then you want to extract the bootloader, the image zip file, and the radio image outside. So these three files, just uh, drag them out into the Android folder. Okay, lovely. And then we can close the factory image here. Now we need to open up the image zip file, not the factory image, so not the one with the word factory in it, but just the image zip file that we extracted just then. And we also need to drag out this boot.img file. Now we'll be using Magisk Manager to install Magisk onto this, this new version of Android, so we can maintain root access once we update, which is going to be handy. And I think the next thing we'll do is set up the command prompt window or PowerShell window to use the platform tools in here. I recommend using the command prompt, it's just a bit easier to handle. Uh, so in this folder, you can go up to the address bar and type in the word CMD and hit enter. This will open up a command prompt window that's already changed to the platform tools folder. So if you notice in this folder, we have these files like ADB and Fastboot, these programs we wanna use. So if we type in ADB, we'll be able to use them. And if we type in say the version flag, it'll also tell us exactly where it's located. And this is the same location, which means we are on the right track. Okay, so I've just opened up my console emulator instead. This is still the same command prompt window, but it just makes it easier for me to show you what I'm typing here. And once you've done that, why don't we go back into the Android folder? So just go up one folder, or go back one folder to where everything else is. And from here, uh, we'll, we will flash the update and also get our phone rerouted. So why don't we prepare the boot image first? And that requires us to go to our phone here. And basically what we need to do is copy that boot image onto our phone so we can use it in Magisk Manager. Usually I like to use ADB to just push the file onto our phone, makes it easier. But uh, why don't we open up the file transfer dialog here for us and um, open up the phone in the, this PC, open this up, and I'm just gonna put it in the SD card or like the root of the internal storage. So you can see how here it says copy to root of storage rather than into a folder. So make sure you do that. And you can see the boot image has been copied over now, which is good. So why don't we head back to our device here and use Magisk Manager to patch it. So open up Magisk Manager, tap on install, but make sure you're on the Canary build. So you can tell by the latest versions having this 
kind of small string of numbers and letters instead. So tap on install. Uh, in the options here, you can leave them all as default. And in the method, we're going to select and patch a file here. And what file are we going to patch? We're going to patch the boot image that we just copied over. So let's head over to the internal storage, scroll down until we can find our boot.img file. Let's tap on that. And then once we've selected that, tap on next and tap on let's go. And this will uh, begin to flash magisk onto our boot image here. So we can pretty much use it straight away after we're done updating to the fourth developer preview. All right, so you can see that it's saved in our downloads folder. So why don't we head back to our computer here and maybe give it a quick refresh and go into the downloads folder. Sometimes it doesn't appear here, which is annoying, but this time it has. So, uh, but in any other case, you can't find this patched image file. Try restarting your phone. Otherwise you can use ADB to pull the file directly from your phone. Otherwise you can probably think of some other way to get this image back onto your computer. But once you have the patched or the magisk patched image, let's copy that over to our computer. I'll just put it where our Android folder is and we can close the folder with our Pixel 3. There we go. And now we're pretty much ready to update. So before we do so, I recommend that you back up anything that you need. Uh, and we'll also actually check through some of the modules that I have installed because you may want to disable them or remove them before updating to the fourth developer preview and of course the subsequent betas. Actually, in this new version of Magisk that we are going to, well, that we already have installed here, it actually has a safe mode uh, built into it. So it's kind of like that core only mode. So it detects if the phone can't boot up properly and we'll seek to disable all the modules and remove them all. At least get your phone booted into safe mode. So with Magisk core mode. So that'd be actually quite interesting to see, but I know Nothing should go wrong here, but in any case, you should back up anything that you might need. So once you are clear of that, why don't we reboot our phone into the bootloader? And to do that, let's uh, restart our phone and hold the volume down button as soon as the screen turns black or freezes. So let's hold the volume down button now. Okay, sometimes it does take a while to boot in here, but now we're in the bootloader. Why don't we head back to our computer here now? And from here, we can do some commands. Let's type in the fast boot devices command. Now what this does, it should return our device's serial number if it's connected properly in Fastboot, which it is, which is great. So why don't we first off start by updating the bootloader image. So let's type in Fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image and hit enter. Now if you can't drag in the bootloader image for whatever reason, and I'll just quickly demonstrate this, you can hold shift and right click on the image file you need and uh, click on copy as path. And when you head over back to your command prompt window, remember the space after the bootloader, you can just right click on it to paste in the full path to the file that you need, which is quite handy. And one other thing that uh, you should do is sometimes when you drag in the image, this folder will be selected with this image. So this is the active window. And when you press enter, it'll say that it can't mount the disk image file. Of course, these images aren't meant to be mounted on windows they need to be pushed in through our command prompt here. So make sure the command prompt is active before you press enter and you should be able to avoid any weird errors. Now that that's finished, let's reboot our phone back into the bootloader for this new bootloader to take effect. So let's type in fastboot space reboot space uh, bootloader and hit enter. Now that we're back in the bootloader, let's update the radio image here. So let's type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after radio and drag this in, or you can copy the path and paste that in, hit enter, and the radio image should flash. Uh, let's reboot our phone back into the bootloader once more so we can hit the up arrow key on our keyboard twice to access previous commands, and we'll hit enter on that, or you can just type it in again. And once we've done that, let's do the bulk of our updating with the image zip file here. So let's type in this command, it's a bit of a long one. Let's type in fastboot, space, two dashes or hyphens and then type in the word skip, another dash or a hyphen, and then type in the word reboot. Leave a space after that, type in update and leave a space after that and drag in the image zip file and hit enter. Now this will update our phone with all the new Android 11 images and we'll also reboot our phone into this special fastboot D mode, this user land fastboot. And so I'm pretty sure that's so it can resize these various partitions and all that. Uh, but we'll leave this to do its job. It should take about another 60 seconds now, and uh, we'll be back. Alrighty, so we're finished here, and uh, our phone is finished updating. And to wrap it all up, because we would have lost the root access as we flashed the image zip file, where the 
our existing boot image was replaced with the stock one. Now it's time to flash the magisk patched image here. So why don't we type in fastboot? Oh, whoops, that would help if I um, press the right buttons, fastboot, uh, flash, boot, and leave a space after that and drag in our magisk underscore patched image here. Hit enter. And once that is done, let's reboot our phone back into Android. And I think we'll do this on the device here. Press the power button here to select reboot system now. And uh, well, I'm going to say fingers crossed, our phone will boot into Android uh, whilst maintaining root access, which I'm sure it will. But just keep in mind the first boot may take a few minutes, maybe not that long, but it may take longer than usual. But just uh, hang in there. Okay, so our phone has booted up here. And that's great. We're on the develop preview, of course. And um, the lock screen disappeared. Okay, here we go. Let's unlock our device. Okay, something's already been granted super user access, which is great. Everything is just as we left off. And it's just going to finish the system update. But why don't we just have a look at Magisk just to see that we're still rooted. Sometimes it doesn't open on the first try, but um, let's see. Okay, there we go. We're still rooted here. You know, latest version of Magisk Canary. Uh, everything is normal. And uh, modules should still be here, except for the ones I removed. And there we go. My root app should still be working. Let's see the storage isolator. That is working fine just well, which is great. So, and we should be on the fourth develop preview here, which we are. And that will come with all sorts of new goodies. I'm sure you'll love exploring. So thanks for watching guys. This is how you can update your phone quite quickly this time uh, with the factory images and allowing Magis to patch the boot image. And um, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. If you have any suggestions for other videos, I do have a ROM review coming out soon, TM. And um, yeah, if you would also like to join us on Discord, that'd be fantastic. Always nice to chat with people on there. And uh, of course, if you need any help, probably Discord's the best place to go because if uh, the comments section is anything to judge, um, I might not ever get your replies, which is really ridiculous at this point in time. So I recommend that you hit up, uh, you know, a Discord account. I mean, it's free, it's quick. I think you don't even need a proper account to join this server. So if you just need some quick help, then uh, feel free to join us on there as well. So thanks for watching, guys. And as always, happy flashing.